Hi, my name is Ken Masterson. I run the Microbiome Prescription Azure website.net site. And today I want to show you my latest addition to the features. This feature basically addresses the issue of not having enough scientific studies. I have largely been successful in abstracting all the information that is there, but there are major gaps. Some foods have never been inspected for the microbiome results. So th that leaves us saying, okay, um, are some of those foods of significance? Well, I have basically built a simple mechanism to give reasonable inferred suggestions of things you should try. Okay, so let's go in and we are on the available sample page. You want to go and click at available suggestions. I have unchecked a variety of things which for the purpose of this demo is not likely to have an impact. It will make the list longer if you leave them all checked. So once we are in there, we just go and click suggestions in your windows and we voila, we get it. Now what you find has been added is three links. One is to provide suggested, one is to um, favonoid foods, and one is to favonoids. Favonoids foods are foods which we have information about their favorite old content. Favonoids means that there were studies using a specific flavonoid and this in your suggestion was a precise matchup. Okay, oh, just for reminder, probiotic suggestion takes you down, gives you a list of things which will have a positive impact. Um, one of them I see is 5.2. I may need to order some of that, that active, which is sort of an interesting. Um, now we have mixed impacts, which some have major, like this one, the open pack for everyday max, has a major impact, very little harmful effect, but major impact. Okay, but probiotics is not what we are looking at today. We're looking at first is favoroids foods. And we now have a list of all of the types of foods which are on the suggestion list and they have weights to them. So if you go down here, and we see a whole variety of different foods. Now, the, each food is linked. So if you take a look at something like, oh, let's say banana, you click that, and it will, it will take you over to the raw banana page. Now, if you take a look at it, you see that one thing stands out as being high in bananas, and everything else is very small. So where we are making a jump of inference is saying that whatever is highest is likely what could be causing the positive effect. So if I click this particular favoroid, and we are now overseeing a list of all the foods with this favoroid. So we see cacao beans and words chocolate, blueberries, grape seed, tea, all of these are rich in this particular flavor noise. So the result is chances are these food will have a similar benefit to you as bananas will. So if you can't stomach bananas, you may want to take a look at this list. So that is part one. Let's go back and look at the specific flavor noise suggested. Again, this comes from studies where flavor noise were explicitly tested and we can go in and take a look. Reservatrol is heavily in grapes and wines. So let's skip that for the moment. The higher value, which means probably the one with the greater benefit, is quercetin, which I will click. And we see what foods are rich in it. Surprisingly, number one is capers. I have never seen a study dealing with capers impact on our microbiome. But take a look at those numbers. Those are massive. And then we have elderberry, and we have radish leaves. We have chokeberry, fruit juice, rocket. We have a variety of things all listed there, which are all high in quercetin. Now, one of the interesting dilemmas you need to ask is, is it better to eat already extracted quercetin in, as a supplement or in the raw food? My long-term preference is the raw food, 
for two reasons. Number one, it's usually cheaper per unit of quercetin. And number two is that usually there's other favoroids or, or other chemicals which works in conjunction with it, with what's there. So it's generally preferred to do it. Uh, I remember there was a study dealing with coumarin extract versus turmeric, and the coumarin extract did not do as much benefit as taking it with turmeric, which automatically includes other chemical compounds. So that's a question you have to ask for yourself. So now we see quercetin and we see what's there. And if we want to say, okay, what's going on with quercetin? You can go in and you see that we have two things mainly in it. This one, which I don't think we have any information on. We see what is in, such, such as saffron, etc. I don't recall seeing any studies in saffron either. But let's go in and go back a little bit, a bit further back, and a bit further back. Whoops. And that's the wrong page. Okay, and let's go up and take a look at something like oregano. There, you will notice on the oregano page, you will see at the top modifies these bacteria. We may have different forms of oregano in a modifier database, so each one points to a different combination. Let's click the first one, and we have oregano oil. Here is what the sources are, um, which are again back to the flavonoid database. And down below, we have all the bacteria it impacts. So that is a little sweet extra that happens is you can bounce back and forth through all the data and get yourself totally confused with the volume of data that you potentially may want to ingest. But that's basically it. Very straightforward, and hopefully you'll find it useful. Have a good day. Bye now. Until my, I show up with my next feature.